Hey everybody, this is Pastor B with Tuesday's Touch for September the 15th, and we've been looking at the life of Joseph. We last left Joseph after he had escaped the clutches of the wife of his master, Potiphar. If you can remember, Potiphar's wife wanted to have an affair with Joseph. Joseph refused because he just didn't want to be that guy. But one day, when they were in the home alone and Joseph was doing his job, she threw herself at him. He resisted, and as he wrestled himself away from her, she held on to his cloak. Bitter for being rejected by this servant, this slave, she concocted a story that said that Joseph had come in to try to assault her, and the proof was the cloak that she had that was his. She told her husband Potiphar, and Potiphar was enraged and threw Joseph in prison, even though he had not done what she said he did. We pick up with Joseph in prison with him still prospering, though. He's been charged with crimes he did not commit. He's struggling in this place. But even in prison, because God is with him, he is prospering. Even in prison, God blesses him with wisdom. Even in prison, God blesses him with strength. Even in wisdom, in prison, rather, God blesses him with this wisdom, with an assurance and a peace and a confidence. Even though he's in a damp and a dark and an uncomfortable place that he does not deserve to be in, he's still prospering. How do you respond when you find yourselves in prison? Not necessarily the prison that Joseph was in, but in an uncomfortable place, in a place in which you don't deserve to be in. When your job becomes a place you don't want to go to every day, how do you respond? When relationships with family and friends become not pleasant, how do you respond? When your fraternity that you love so much becomes a hostile environment, when your church becomes a place where you just don't want to be, how do you respond to prisons? COVID-19 has been a prison for many of us. None of us deserve to be here. None of us really deserve this isolation and the loss that have come because of COVID-19. What have you been doing? How have you been responding? How have you been acting? in this difficult place. I can remember being in high school one time having to dissect, I think it was a frog. And the teacher put us in groups and, and I had an idea of the group I wanted to be in, but that was different from what he wanted. And as a result, he put me in a group of people I just didn't want to be in. And, as a, and of course, as a kid, I just didn't engage. I didn't cut up a clown in class, but I just, I just didn't pay attention as they dissected the frog. And, a few days later, we were expected to dissect the frog and, 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 and identify the marked areas of the inside of the frog without the group by ourselves. And because I spent the time I was supposed to be learning with my group sulking because I didn't want to be where I was and with my mind focused on the other group, I didn't do well on the test. Because as, as much as we may be uncomfortable in places we don't want to be in, Sulking and being sad and crossing your arms is not necessarily the best option. So what do you do when you find yourself in a prison? Do you isolate? Do you sulk? Do you return evil for evil and backhanded comment for backhanded comment? Well, Joseph decided that he was going to be good and do good. He used his gifts to help the people around him. The Bible says that the cupbearer and also the baker of the Egyptian king found themselves in a hard spot and fallen out of favor with the, the king of Egypt. And one day, Joseph saw the cupbearer looking sad and sullen. They asked him what was wrong with him, and he said he had had a dream that he couldn't interpret. And so Joseph interpreted the dream. Joseph did the same thing for the baker. He, he interpreted the dream. He didn't allow his disappointment with the place he was in and his unfair treatment stop him from using his gifts, the gifts that God had given him to be used in the world. He was in prison, but he did good. He was in prison, but he, he chose not to sulk and fold his arms and distance himself from the people that were around him. He couldn't break them out of prison. He couldn't get himself out of prison, but at least he could make their lives better he was in prison, but the prison did not have him. And what we have to remember 
is that prison walls may surround us, but they don't have to change us. Prison walls may surround us, but they don't have to change us. We can still be the people of God, doing the good that God says do in the world and following our dreams and passions, even though we find ourselves in prison. A few weeks ago, we had a big school supply giveaway that we do in conjunction with other Presbyterian churches in the community. And there was a lady out there with a box. And so I got closer to her and I discovered that there were 100 masks in the box. I know now it was 100. I didn't know then. I just saw a lot of masks. Handmade masks of all types of patterns and colors and shapes. And I said, well, what do you have? And she says, well, I make these masks. And I've been giving them out to children since the pandemic started so that the kids can have nice masks to wear when they go back to school. I said, really? She said, yeah. I said, well, how many have you made? She says, I've made hundreds of masks. I get material myself. Sometimes people donate the material, but I make them all by hand. I've made over over 100. I brought 100 today, though, to give out to the kids and parents as they come through the line to get the school supplies. Even in a pandemic, she was doing good. And she's not the only one. People have given me masks. People have shared masks. People have made face coverings. They've made dinner. They've done a lot of good during the pandemic because although we find ourselves in this kind of prison, the prison doesn't have to have us. Although we find ourselves in a difficult place like Joseph, we can use our gifts to bless people around us. So do good. Bless somebody around you. Be a light in the midst of the dark world that we are currently living in. God will bless you for it. And you'll be a blessing to somebody else. And somebody may even say, hey, I want to know about the God that you serve. Joseph had asked the cupbearer to remember him when he got out of prison, uh, but he forgot him. The cupbearer forgot Joseph. Sometimes people forget us. I guess he got so wrapped up in being free and, and, and not being in prison that he just forgot about Joseph. But in time, he would remember Joseph. And in time, he will find himself, Joseph, in the presence of the Egyptian king with a word from God. We'll pick that up next week. This is Pastor B. Tuesday's Touch for September the 15th. Hey, please listen to the announcements below uh, so that you can see what's going on with the church. But more importantly, forward this email to at least four people. Forward it to four people that you know and encourage them to forward it to four people that they know and encourage them to forward it to four people that they know so that hopefully it reaches someone who finds himself in a prison and they are inspired and encouraged to keep on moving, even in difficult times. Hey, I want to encourage you also to participate in our morning and evening prayer uh, calls. We're using the same conference call number that we've been using uh, during worship and during this pandemic time. So please participate in that. The details are in the announcements below. And I also want to remind everybody of our outdoor worship experience, which is on the 27th of this month at 9 a.m. here on the campus of the church. It's going to be a wonderful time in the Lord. God bless you. This is Pastor B. Tuesday's Touch. You have been touched.